You are listening to the Stoic Solutions Podcast, practical wisdom for everyday life. I'm your host, Justin Vakula, and my voice has mostly returned following a week break for episode 72, Taking the High Road. Visit my website at stoicsolutionspodcast.com where you can email me, connect with me on social media, find past episodes, and join my Discord chat server for interactive discussion. Support my work through Patreon, PayPal, and referral links by visiting the Donate tab on my website. Stoic writers encourage us to use our time well and to be aware of costs associated with the choices we make. We have many opportunities throughout our lives to take the high road, disengage from potential or actual conflicts, or continue to engage, possibly escalating a conflict. The virtue of prudence, Picking our battles is a common theme in Stoic texts, where to, through our wisdom and discretion, determine what is worth our effort. We can evaluate pros and cons, and, where possible, think ahead to evaluate what's worth fighting for. Optimally, we can reflect upon our choices and possibilities surrounding decision points outside of an emotional state already involved in a conflict and ponder whether we should continue our efforts or engage. We can, especially at nighttime, review our day and think about whether we used our time well, whether the conflicts we engaged in were worth it. This can be a helpful stoic exercise. Taking a principled stand, having the courage to speak up, is laudable in many cases, but not always. Shall we care so much about an insult or a perceived insult and retaliate in kind. Surely we don't want to be brought down by others, sink to their level, and compromise our tranquility by getting involved in a war of words or physical aggression when, for instance, we encounter someone displaying road rage. If we give in to others' provocations, we can lose a battle with ourselves, fall victim to anger, and act on the impulse of wanting revenge which very often does not bring about justice. If faced with an insult, we can often determine that the person isn't so important to us, that we're content with our own character and virtuous life, not wanting social approval, while also realizing that we can't please everyone. Others' behavior is very often outside our control. People will be angry for irrational reasons, even when we do our best to be upstanding human beings. Others create problems for themselves when they respond in an extreme manner, perhaps with an attitude of heightened entitlement and a lack of gratitude. We can do our best to calm, help, or be friendly with others, but even with our best efforts, others won't be satisfied. Perhaps we can be grateful for, shall we say, others showing their true colors and us having the knowledge that a person we might have thought as being a good friend or acquaintance was, after all, not the virtuous person we imagined. We can accept what has transpired rather than being in a state of denial and or bargaining to fix things, especially when a wrongdoer continues their ill ways. Consider those who, for instance, remain in intimate relationships with their partners for several years only later in the relationship, discovering unchangeable, lamentable truths, and believe that they are in too deep, perhaps married, and so entangled that they remain unhappy in a cheaper-to-keeper relationship. Perhaps leaving would be advisable, because mental contentment can be more valuable than some financial strain or hardships associated with change, but they remain in the relationship, It's best to find some ugly truths earlier on and have the courage to walk away before in too deep. Of course, we would prefer no ugly truths, but this always won't be the case. Maybe there's no way to make some situations better if others aren't willing to put in the effort, but surely making it worse is not a good path forward, as partners may collaborate to make it worse, blaming the other. In taking the high road, not being provoked to anger by others, we can rid ourselves, and should rid ourselves, 
of language blaming others, making excuses, we can refrain from saying things like, he made me angry, she is annoying, and I get so mad when he's in the room. We can accept undesirable characteristics of others, knowing that it is inevitable that there will be such people in the world, as Marcus Aurelius says, we can work to disengage, if possible, or tolerate such individuals, making minimal contact. It's a throwback to a previous podcast episode, number 63, with musicians of the band Cellar Darling, who, in their song Rebels, sing, We won't engage you, we'll break away. What good might come from anger, after all? Stoic writers take a hard stand against anger, never or almost never desiring such a state which interferes with our rational thought processes. The nature of anger, on the Stoic viewpoint, can be quite self-destructive. Some outside Stoic circles may note some benefits, what they think to be benefits, that may come with anger, like being inspired to fix some injustice, but I won't see anger as a preferred way to achieve some goal when we can find better ways, such as a rational, calm want for justice. We won't always take the high road, and we shouldn't. As I mentioned, some battles will be worth fighting. But shall we squander our time getting involved in disputes on Facebook or internet forums with the want to be right, to win arguments, and to be recognized for being right. Seemingly endless discussions about culture wars, hot-button issues, and arguments about sports can be an incredible time sink. We can work to fill our downtime with more productive activity to be aware of how we're using our time, and if we're really so inclined to share opinions, maybe we can make more of an impact by starting a podcast, or YouTube channel, or participating in local discussion groups on a website like meetup.com. We can care about a topic, but it's not always wise to engage in discussions. Stoics aren't to be numb to the suffering in the world, uncaring, or devoid of compassion. Stoic writers put forth a call to achieve not only personal excellence, but to go about and make the world a better place, utilizing skills and playing roles oriented towards helping others in some way. Perhaps we're to be assertive, rather than passive or aggressive with others, we can make our wants and needs known. We can take on a certain cause to address concerns of animal suffering and environmental degradation. We can advocate for people with disabilities and volunteer our time to benefit charitable organizations. Conflict is inherent to human life. It's around many corners, but what is worth engaging can be a difficult choice, especially given our limited time, energy, and resources. So use your time well, take the high road when a battle isn't worth fighting, and have the courage to engage conflict when it's appropriate. Visit my website at stoicsolutionspodcast.com where you can email me, connect with me on social media, find past episodes, and join my Discord chat server for interactive discussion. Support my work through Patreon or PayPal, and referral links by using the donate tab on my website. Podcast music, used with permission, is brought to you by Phil Giordana's symphonic metal group Fairyland from their album Score to a New Beginning. John Bartman offered free consultation and audio edits for episodes 51 through 63. Thanks to generous patrons and fans of this podcast who helped support my work. Have a great day.